welcome back to my channel guys today we'll be looking at a super game between Daniel Dubov and Magnus Carlsen it uh, was a game that happened in 2020 in the Things Masters tournament it was a really great game Daniel Dubov just blundered a piece and he's managed to win in the end so let's see how this game goes we have d4 knight to f6 c4 e6 Knight c3, Knight f3, I'm sorry, it's Knight to f3, I think. Yes, Knight f3, d5, and g3. So, it's the Queen's Gambit declined is on the board. We have Bishop to b4 with check. And knight bd2 blocking the check. We have d takes c4 and b takes g4. I'm sorry, g3 never happened. G3 happened over on this side. I by mistake did it as b3. We have bishop b4 with check, knight bd2, and d takes c4 now. Now, uh, Carlson ju just got a free piece, free pawn over here we have bishop to g2 and a5 we have a3 and bishop takes d2 we have bishop takes d2 and b5 now, uh, as you can see, Carlson has got a lot of play on the queen side with these pawns on over here. If he can get the like the, if he can get a move like b4 takes takes and then c3, he's going to completely block off this bishop and maybe even create a pass pawn. So, after bishop takes d2, we have b5, a4 and c6 now just uh, defending all these pawns and keeping the pawn chain we have queen c2 sorry queen c2 and bishop b7 just we and cutting that dark squared bishop and keeping it on this long strong diagonal we have h4 and knight bd7 We have h5 and h6. Dubov uh, kept pushing his pawns, and if that pawn managed to come to h6, and if Dubov did a plan like g4 and g5 in the future, then that would have caused a nuisance for Magnus to castle, and also his king would be under attack. We have knight e5 now by white and after knight e5 we get knight to d5 so both players are just strengthening their knights in the center we have rook h4 and knight 7 f6 We have king to f1 and queen c7. We have king g1 and knight b4. Now as you can see Magnus has got a really strong knight and if that knight does further more damage on the queen side then it's going to cause a lot of damage for Donald Lubov. We have queen to c1 and rook d8. Now as you can see Dubov uh, has not castled yet here and Dubov has not castled and yet he has brought all his pieces in the center and has great development. So Dubov absolutely has compensation for not castling and as you can see Magnus 
has these block pieces. This knight isn't doing anything here. This bishop is completely blocked. The queen is blocked. And these rooks and both the rooks are also blocked by these pawns. We have a takes b5 and c takes b5. Now uh, Magnus has three pass three pawns here against one, and if he can kind of get these moves in, he can create two massive pass pawns on this side and win the game. We have bishop takes b4 and a takes b4. Now Dubo just eliminated that knight, destroyed Magnus' pawn structure because that knight there was really strong so it had to be eliminated with that bishop on there. We have rook a7 and knight to d5. Now Magnus just improving that knight's place in the center and also that knight will be really strong if it somehow manages to come to c3. If Magnus can push c3 and after white takes he can just take with the knight and he'll have a very happy game. Now after b3 now after now after white's move something like Queen to c2, just preparing to take that queen on that diagonal and also preparing to develop it to some on this dark diagonal. Magnus can play c3, and after takes, you can take with the knight, and this knight is a pretty strong piece. So, going back after a knight to d5, we have rook to g4. by Dubov and rook to g8 just defending that pawn and also giving nice opposition to the strong rook over there yeah just a second Yeah, so I'm back. It was just the mailman. We have queen to c2 and c3. Now Magnus advancing his pass pawns. So uh, after B takes C3, Magnus advances his pass pawn. We have rook to A3 and rook to C8. We have knight to d3 and knight to f6. Now just Magnus and Dubo both improving their position or, or on the king's side. We have bishop takes b7 and queen takes b7. Not that sorry. We have knight to c5 and rook takes c5. Here Magnus captured that piece and just, you know, 
Dubo blundered a piece over here because what would happen if you would capture this you can could not capture that room because our queen is hanging so magnus just captured that knight and after captures and captures magnus is up a piece and i don't think uh, dubo blundered this piece he i think miscalculated something we have c6 and queen takes c6 Wait, that's so you know Dubo just sacrificed that pawn and I don't think he's down too much material and uh, as you can see you cannot actually use Dubo has Carlson has attack over here and Carlson can even checkmate you if you try to move the king or do something crazy. So after c6, queen takes c6, we have rook takes c3 and queen to b6. We have rook takes c3, queen to b6, and e3. Now just magn uh, do both here block that checkmate threat or that attack so he could move his queen and then feel and not actually get checkmated. So if you went right away for something like <coughs> rook to c8 check and then after captures and captures you can get checkmated like this so after takes and takes this is checkmate so you cannot actually go for that immediately we have e3 and king to e7 now just not allowing Dubo to pick up his rook like that we have rook to c6 and queen to d8 now the queen can also help out with the defense of the 7th and 8th rank we have queen to c5 with check and king to f6 now you may seem like uh, Carlson's king is all safe and not without worries but there's actually a winning move for Dubo over here and you can just pause the video for a second and find the winning move for Dubo. For those of, of you who were able to find it, it's actually rook to d6. So after rook to, d, rook to d6, what happens is that you prepare f3 and also then queen to... queen can check on this diagonal and after the king moves you can easily checkmate like that so rook to d6 is the winning idea Dubo did play the move and magnus tried queen to e7 over here but queen to e7 is actually a blunder and feel free to again pause the video and find the winning move for Dubo over here For those who were able to do it, it's actually queen to d4 with check. So Carlson can only go, Carlson can go to f5 and g5. If you go to f5, then uh, it's just checkmate in one. Queen to f4 is just checkmate. The king cannot move. So Carlson has to go to g5. And now Dubo plays f3. Now if the knight moves, then queen to f4 is again checkmate. So once you capture that, 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 Magnus has great attack and also he can always win the game with some moves like g4, f4 and all. So after f3, uh, we have f5, now just he just gives away that piece to do bow instead of getting checkmated. But again f5 is a huge blunder. Uh, there's another forced checkmate over here 
and you uh, for those of you who are able to find it it's queen to f4 with check but Dubo didn't play that after f5 we have f takes g4 he captures the piece first and rook to c8 by magnus now magnus has ideas of giving check over here after king moves just try and give checks until the game draws because the position has gone worse for magnus we have queen to f4 with check now it's a forced check made in two moves it's queen to f4 with check after the king moves to f6 we have queen to f5 with checkmate the pawn cannot capture because it's pinned to the king and the king cannot move anywhere so queen to e7 was a blunder there by magnus so instead of playing queen to e7 he would he could have gone something like queen to e8 because then he, the queen could still be defending and the king would have a free square to go to e7 so yeah a great great game for Daniel Dubov he blundered a piece and then he could win the game so yeah thank you very much guys I hope you enjoyed the